Hi. What's your name and where are you from? Okay, my name is Pastor Apollo Ovar, and I am from Miramar, Florida. I've been a Christian all my entire life. Uh, my great-grandmother was a Christian. My grandmother was a Christian. My mom is a Christian. My father is a Christian. And, of course, they passed it down, uh, Christianity, to me all my entire life, a right. Christian. Um, because I think at the time, uh, my family, you know, had an experience with Christ Jesus. They know who Christ is and they know that Christ, um, is their savior. And of course, um, that's what I was taught. So it was almost like not having, uh, experience in any other type of religion, you know. As far as being a Christian is one thing, but saved is another. You know, um, I didn't get saved until I was, until 18 years ago. So now I guess I could say I'm a saved Christian. You have a lot of Christians, but they're not, they're not saved. Um, that question, I know that had to be uh, God's plan, not my plan. I know when I set off to have a stronger relationship with Christ, I began to learn him the more. Um, really getting into his word, um, knowing everything about him. And it seemed like the more I got to know him, the more my desire grew to become a leader in Christ Jesus. Okay, um, I worked as a choir directress. Um, maybe for about 18 years. I served on the praise and worship team. And uh, every fourth Sunday, um, Eve Gill, which means effective voices everywhere, a combination of us would share the process. I guess the Lord had to put that thought in my heart first. Um, I guess it began with him showing me um, a church, showing me uh, my daughter preaching the word of God, um, showing me that the church was packed out and showing me people on the outside trying to get in. He also showed me another dream of another church. And he kept showing me, it seemed like as I got closer to him, he began to show me a whole lot of things that, you know, that I can do in him. So he began to show me and speak to me, you know, about that process first. And then he had told me that um, to start saving money uh, for, for our church. And uh, I know the first thing was he giving us the name, you know. And when he gave me the name, I knew that was the name. So um, we went on ahead and um, got our articles of corporations in the name like seven years ago. And like um, after that, we had started saving, saving every month. And it still wasn't a season to move forward. So we had been saving for many years before we actually put um, the money down for church. And God was so good. He let nothing come against those funds. Absolutely nothing. Children going off to college. Um, you know, financial issues from here to there. But nothing ever came against what he allowed us to put on the side to save for the church. So it was a lot of things going on. We had to prepare, you know, but we kept living, we kept moving, we kept serving, kept being faithful in the house of the Lord. And um, so here we are today, you know, um, Jesus Love and Truth Ministries, <laughs> the process. I guess the Lord had to put that thought in my heart first. Um, I guess it began with him showing me um, a church showing me uh, my daughter preaching the word of God 
um, showing me that the church was packed out and showing me people on the outside trying to get in. He also showed me another dream of another church. And he kept showing me. It seemed like as I got closer to him, he began to show me a whole lot of things that, you know, that I can do in him. So he began to show me and speak to me, you know, about that process first. And then he had told me that um, to start saving money. Uh, for for our church and uh, I know the first thing was he giving us the name you know and when he gave me the name I knew that was the name so um, we went on ahead and um, got our articles of corporations in the name like seven years ago and like um, after that we had started saving saving every month and it still wasn't a season to move forward. So we had been saving for many years before we actually put um, the money down for church. And God was so good. He let nothing come against those funds. Absolutely nothing. Children going off to college. Um, you know, financial issues from here to there. But nothing ever came against what he allowed us to put on the side to save for the church. So there's a lot of things going on. We had to prepare, you know, but we kept living. We kept moving. We kept serving, kept being faithful in the house of the Lord. And um, so here we are today, you know, um, Jesus Love and Truth Ministries. I can say um, my spiritual mother, her name is Bishop Etta Arbin, definitely inspired me. Um, she poured into my life um, many years. She preached the unadulterated word of God. Um, it Sometimes the word come to inspire us. It come to empower us. It come to rebuke us. But with all of that, with all of that, it allowed me to be stronger in the word of God. So she definitely inspired me. Um, then my aunt, who's an apostle, Apostle Deborah Graham, expired me. And then I have an uncle who is, um, he's a, not a, no, he's not a deacon. He's a, um, I can't think of it. Elder. Elder Moses definitely inspired me, you know. So, and then you also have leaders that I see, and you know, I watch on TV every now and then. They're popular leaders like T.D. Jakes, you know, um, Joyce Myers. Um, they have a whole lot of them um, that inspire me. Um, Family uh, Praise and Worship Center. Um, Pastor Quince, Quincy. Quincy. Um, so he, a lot of people inspired me to... Just move forward in, in God and move forward in leadership along with living the word, along with obeying the word of God. So that all worked together, all worked together uh, for the good. And, uh, we have service at uh, in Hollywood. The address is 1007 South 21st Avenue. And the zip code is 3302 zero uh in hollywood and i love the area over there is a multicultural area we're praying for a multicultural church um and we're asking god to just send people from all walks of life amen to be a part of our ministry our ministry is only about six months old six month old baby but we enjoy every moment of ministry for as long as the Lord allow me to. He give me the strength. Give me the ability. Um, to preach the word of God. For as long as I'm able to. My husband and I. Plan on preaching the word of God. And having a ministry. Where the souls can come and worship. I'm definitely praying. You pray first. And then you wait for God to tell you. What to speak on on Sunday 
Um, and sometimes, even when you're praying, he may not even answer right away. Um, he's waiting to give me the direction for Sunday. And a lot of times, um, in preparation, it takes all of that. And maybe I could be reading a chapter or just studying a chapter, and he may have me to stay at that particular chapter um, and say, okay, talk about this or talk about that in the Word of God. So just by the Bible, just being broad, a lot of people don't understand it's a tool for life. And everything that we need is in the Word of God. Just studying it for yourself. Oh my God, major breakthrough in your life. There's so many things that the Bible can teach us. It will give us so much love, so much hope, so much joy. So the Lord will direct me in um, which you know subject to talk about on Sunday because he knows what the people need. It's not what I need. He knows what the people need. Amen? Mm -hmm. Community outreach can be pretty much everything. You know, you can go out in the community, knock on doors, introduce yourself, say that your church is in a neighborhood. You can actually pretty much have church on the outdoors as well. You can have service around holidays as well. You can also um, probably write a grant because we plan on writing a grant and plan on offering um, free music lessons. So there's so many ways that, you know, we can reach the community, you know, and um, get the word of God out there. Um, a lot of our communities are uh, failing, you know, they're still in the same condition. And if they don't ever get to know who, uh, know the word of God, it will remain in that condition. So community outreach is definitely important. We need to definitely find time to reach out to the community and meet them at their needs you know meet them at their needs see if we can help them you know not just to come to church tell them about Jesus tell them how much Jesus loved them and how he wants to transform their lives and change their lives you know because there are so many churches in the neighborhood that you know uh, that the people in the community can attend but just telling them about Jesus alone and and will inspire them to find out more about him well they say that ministry begins at home it starts at home before you actually begin to reach out into the community or reach out to different people it starts at home it starts at home so if your family is falling apart you have to step back and say, God, you know, what is it that you're leading me to do? How can you help me to get my family on track spiritually wanting you? You know, he may reveal some things to you, some things that you have to change as an individual so that your family can believe that Christ is definitely real. So your family needs to be on board when it comes to to starting a ministry. And thank God we have that. Amen.